Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties for our first full weekend recap. All four major regions firing on all cylinders. And we got to begin with the first week, the debut of this new look best of three LCS. And unironically, Mark, day one, the best day of LCS action that we have seen since Team Solo Mid was a relevant organization. I, you know what? I, you might even have to look back into that history and find an, a specific day to challenge what we had this past weekend. Giga Bonanza out there on the Saturday, rolling the red carpet out with Team Liquid versus FlyQuest, and you're straight into a Cloud9 Dignitas matchup. The LCS delivered. The broadcast was fantastic. This was the LCS's shining day on the weekend. And you get a pair of Game 3s as well to kick things off, which right away you see the bonus of Best of 3s because this Cloud9 versus Dignitas set, I can already hear people after that first game saying, bring back Fudge, Cloud9 overrated yet again. But they're just a slow start. Thanatos takes a game, a game and a half to kind of ease into things before he starts looking comfortable but this was a very competitive series start to finish i you know i don't want to call it nerves or anything like that but it was more or less just settling in to the situation the position the moment that you were in in that time for thanatos in the series that's all it seemed to be because he absolutely from kind of that halfway point of game two you know 10 minutes in or so looked extremely comfortable for the rest of the series and did look in good communication good synergy with the rest of the Cloud9 squad. And the rest of that Cloud9 squad, they started to play. And they started to play the way that you know and should expect them to be playing at the LCS more than enough to challenge and take down Dignitas in those next two games. But this is what we talk about with the best of threes. This is what you want, this type of challenge. We could talk about it as well with Team Liquid. And FlyQuest was another fantastic example of why that best of three is going to be a success, I think, right away early for the LCS. But focusing in on the Cloud9 series, this is what we wanted in best of threes from Cloud9 to show overall that you are that top level team, that top strength. But at the same time, heading into this matchup, you needed to see Dignitas find success. You wanted to see this Dignitas team show that they will be a competitive squad for this summer split instantly what you saw in that victory against cloud nine and even in the defeats what you saw from this team i'm getting ready to stamp on at the very minimum that bottom that bottom four is out of question for this dignitas team they are only looking at that top four position i mean they had angles to get back in both game two and three and it looked like they might be working towards that in both of those so yeah the guys who haven't played in a split Sven, okay, we can meme on the Varus build a bit, but mechanically, didn't look like him and Licorice missed a beat, absolutely holding their own in their respective positions. Cloud9, we got Zeri and Kaisa being met up, which means Berserker's probably gonna be one of, if not the best ADC in the LCS. JoJo still had some JoJo Spring moments where he didn't look, uh, you know, not on the same page, he's getting solo killed, but ooh, he'll level up. That's why you're not maybe putting the full uh, 11 out of 10, 10 out of 10 on this one for Cloud9. It's more of a 8.5, you know, 9, somewhere type of zone is where I'm feeling. Because, yes, you do know that you are not quite getting the star level, the superstar level that we know JoJo Pyeong cakes and how he can carry a game and how he can be that leading charge for you. We haven't seen that for Cloud9, and you didn't need it in this series. But a Dignitas at the very beginning of the split is going to be very different from the Dignitas that's going to be challenging you, I bet, towards the end of the split. You're going to need that star power. Before that matchup, we had a finals rematch. The two MSI squads, FlyQuest and Team Liquid, also going the distance. And Game 3 was the burst through for Mr. Big Daddy Impact because he was camped. He was denied CS down three levels at times early on a Zach. Didn't get to play the game until the third game of this series where he finally gets some attention from Umpty and gets to land some absolutely disgusting equalizers throughout this third game on the Rumble. And the set counter pick didn't quite work for Mr. Brook. No, that one, that one failed spectacularly, I think. But that's kind of what you gamble on when you're playing with a player like Whiffo in that top side is going through that type of risk in taking these uh, opposite picks, taking his blind picks, all these type of things. 
doesn't come up for FlyQuest this time around. And when you did look at what this series, what didn't come up for FlyQuest, early on, it was Quad in the mid lane, getting a rough treatment and focus from the Team Liquid crew, making sure he was set behind. But they find a way to get involved, get in these team fights, get that Aurelian soul scaling up a little bit. Obviously not enough. Too much power in the hands of APA on the Corky, which how about this game from APA? Absolutely an APA that has returned from MSI. I think with a, an additional level of cockiness or, or chip on his shoulder to carry through these matches and, and yap away into all chat. Yeah, and you can talk about him. You know, Corky, a pick. We haven't really seen him play much, but both him and then Jan, especially in game three with the Zeri, Cockiness for APA, let's call it confidence for the boys because you saw signs of this from Jan, especially at MSI, being the aggressor positioning forwards as an AD carry and that has continued here into the LCS. It seems like both forms kind of carried over from MSI for these two squads in game three. And it's been exactly what we have been hoping for from these MSI trips for Team Liquid. Talked about it last time they did have a chance obviously going to Worlds and the situation after that in the spring, you know, for a couple of those months, didn't necessarily see those improvements. And then towards the end of it, you did get improvements in performance, but it ne wasn't necessarily the metrics that we were checking in on after that international event. MSI comes around, we see APA step up, we see Jan step up and really establish himself in that bottom lane. And we asked, what that, was that going to continue now to the LCS? The answer game one against FlyQuest through this best of three series is a hell yes. And we're going to, I'm sure it's going to be memed on and visited throughout the split. Mr. Inspired and being a power farming jungler. He had one kindred mark at like 20 minutes. He plays the Nidalee in game three and he has lots of farm but doesn't have much impact on it. Umpty clearly playing a totally different play style that ended up working out in a good way. Uh, game three for Team Liquid. Obviously, LCS, first look at the live patch. Our first look at the buffed Ezreal, and it's the reigning MVP. Quid, looking like Danny on EG around the Baron pit, getting this Ezreal quadra kill and the Baron to secure a game for 100 T. There, There is a hot and cold from this 100 Thieves series. Let's start with the hot, and that hotness is Quid on the Ezreal for 100 Thieves and the way that they played. A lot of people, some questions, some concerns heading into this split, knowing, okay, what changes are happening to the LCS. The rumors from last year that 100 Thieves was looking to possibly take that buyout from the LCS. People were concerned you can rest easy on the performance of this 100 Thieves team that I think you're going to get a continuation of that overachievement you got in the spring split that we just passed through and what you're getting and the leading charge of that is Quid in the mid lane, developing into that star, developing into the consistent player that you can rely on for this 100 Thieves team. And also the bot lane had a big step up. Both Meech and Ayla played fantastic in this set, but we got to start talking about NRG because I know they changed a lot of the coaching staff, and this might be the prime example that a coaching staff is more important than you think because they look completely lost in this series. This is the cold, and we are talking about ice bath levels of cold here for NRG. It has gotten so bad, this performance, and really, you know, it's sure it's one, but it is a best of series where they, again, faltered, failed, looked miserable pretty much twice in this series. And it brings up those questions, given the disappointment of last split and where the changes have gone and why this is the result that we are getting. You've laid it out. One of the ones that people can look at is the coaching staff, is that management. I think a lot of people looking at, at General Manager Jonathan, who's replaced and taken out someone who was responsible for a lot of the positive things going right for NRG that culminated in getting to that top eight, beating G2 at Worlds last year. They've lost. Now the other changes is DeMonte on the coaching staff. I think a lot of people familiar with him during, of course, the playing days of the LCS, but certainly has been an impactful and valuable coaching asset as well since his playing days. And the other factor, Ignar, the other side that we have looked at as well, talking about what benefits, what we thought, who he could provide to this team. That is that question of now, well, is it the manager? Is it DeMonte as an assistant coach? Is it Ignar as the support player? that was pulling the strings, that was making the calls to be decisive for this team, because that has absolutely been lacking 
And from that point, the mistakes have spilled out even further for this NRG team. So Quid looks fantastic on live patch Ezreal. But your boy pays. Does it even need the buffs on Ezreal to be looking even more lethal as he leads the way for Genji in this marquee matchup against T1? 50 minutes total for this series, and Pays finishes it on a pair of Ezreal games 17, 0, and 8. That MSI momentum for the Genji bot lane, it's only going up. This is a significant event in the LCK, and I want to note this for both of these teams, both Gen G and T1. First, let's start with the positive, of course, Gen G. This is our MSI champions returning home, and I think that they have finally shed that weight that monkey off their back that they've been carrying all this time, being back to back to back to back to back, all these backs, champions of the LCK, and choking, not getting it done. All the criticisms on the international stage, they get an MSI, they get an international recognized trophy right there, bringing it on home. There's that confidence unlocked. No longer is T1 that demon, that thorn in your side that can get you. You're on to bigger and better things. You think that you are clearly above them, and right now you have proven that you are above them, and this performance is a clear, clear-cut one from me. I think we talked about this one at a various other points. Some of the worst moments against Gen G for T1 is when you're not hearing them talk about Chovy, because that means the other four members are being enough of a problem that you're losing the game off of that and not what Chovy can do, and he can take the easy pass on it, because if he's on the easy pass, it's easy street for Gen G at that point. You gotta look at it as well from T1 because there's also the recognition on the T1 side that you know what, with what's going on with the DDoS, where Gen G has achieved themselves too. I don't know if we're gonna get the T1, the world championship edition of T1 again this year. I don't know if we can reach that level of heights of performance of everything else going right, the meta read, all these things for T1 with that lack of practice, with the adjustments, with everything that has to happen to get even some practice and to mitigate, mitigate what's been going on. So there's a realization of that, but that doesn't mean we aren't gonna get a good, we aren't gonna get a strong and competitive T1. I think that's another thing to keep track of from this series, but man, oh man, the positive takeaway here for Gen G. We talked about it to lead in, pays on this Ezreal. That is the other factor to check in. Not only were they not mentioning Chovy, we're mentioning pays, 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 and pays all the time that we can because he was incredible this series. The bottom lane has found their mojo together. Yeah, it really feels like the synergy has finally come online and that maybe came with a conversation of Lahen saying, pays, I'm a psycho. I'm going to dive at all times. Just follow up with me because you saw that multiple times in just a straight up 2v2 against T1 here. But when the Genji bot lane is playing like this, now we're moving into AP jungler carry meta where that's, is there anyone on the planet better suited for that than Canyon? And no, that just means Genji might get even better in summer. And where do you think that a uh, ginormously fed, strong, powerful, confident Canyon is gonna head to try and put some extra advantages? It's gonna be Pace down in that <laughs> bottom lane again, or heck, be like T1, leave the Skarner open for Keen. No problem for Gen G. This is a Gen G that is primed and poised and ready to take control of the world. Yeah, I mean, Keen and Zeus basically had a handshake this series. We're just going to sit here in the solo lanes and watch the game play out. And it worked pretty well for Keen. I know people are going to overreact for T1 saying, well, they're done for summer. But guys, Gen G is the best team in the world. T1 still going to be favorites against anyone else in the LCK. And they've only played two series here in summer. Also had a big marquee matchup in the LEC battle for first. A couple 4-0 squads. SK versus Fnatic. And listen, this one was... Very back and forth, this SK bot lane continues to impress, but you got Razork stealing a Baron, proving that he is the best jungler in Europe right now, and then Humanoid and Noah both stepping up for team fights. Uh, Noah's MSI disappointment has been completely forgotten about. He looks pretty damn good through five games. Holy cow, well, they didn't see any of that at MSI from Noah, that's for sure. No, Saving sir. it here for the LEC, and yes, taking down SK Gaming. And SK, that was pretty hot, you know, 4-0 heading into this series against Fnatic, but he's laid it all out. Razork, it's not a 50-50, 
when Razork's on that other side, making sure that he's claiming it for Fnatic. The bottom lane, they had the mojo, they had exactly what you wanted to do, and this was the bottom lane from SK that you wanted to see the challenge against type of thing right here, and I think we absolutely got it in this matchup. You might be seeing a more motivated, dedicated, determined Fnatic than we've seen all year, courtesy of Team Liquid, upsetting them at MSI, the matchup they should have win, won, because these guys look hungrier than ever for so late in a season where it feels like so many other teams are burning out. And we'll talk about it, but that is the exact remedy, the perfect thing, the one thing you needed to happen this split for a region of the LEC is to have someone have that fire to rise up, to be that challenger, because I think we'll talk about it with G2 a little bit. You need someone to be a, considered a real threat, someone that is actually going to make G2 sweat a little bit and think about it. A fanatic that is hungry, angry, and improved, that could be the fanatic that could do it. And obviously, you know, you got a couple titles left with Summer and then the season finals still here in the LEC. So I don't think Fnatic's only thinking about Worlds. They're thinking about taking home a title. And they, they play in this form and they, they're looking like maybe the favorites here for this split. Especially when you combine Fnatic's level and then you look at what's going on with G2 so far early on in Summer. We've talked about BLG, Gen.G, Top Esports. No MSI hangover there. They're right into things dominating again. The G2 still looks like they might be drunk from MSI because not only uh, this week, they should have lost to Giant X. They should be below 500. Then they play against Rogue, who they almost always lose in the regular season to. And you need a backdoor on Tristana for Caps. Even he's laughing at the end of this game. G2 looks anything but clean right now. G2 looks like they might have had a couple too many sing taos and, and dumplings over in Chengdu over the over the MSI break because yes, it has continued into a very lethargic start for this team to kick off what is this split for the LEC. Really, uh, the loss is one where they did look all sorts out of place and everything else. And then yes, you know it's crazy times when G2 is beating Rogue in their slump. When they slump, this is where you lose to Rogue and it continues to slump. We have these conversations at this time around. They do get the backdoor complete. And yes, it is Caps. The one player I think out of everybody on this G2 roster that maybe you can you can point and maybe say is looking a little bit more together and with it all than the rest of the crew, maybe not stumbling around quite like the others, but certainly a, a slow and sluggish start for G2 since MSI. Yeah, still a little bit concerned with the level of yike that we've seen really throughout the majority of uh, 2024. I'm calling it a soft, sophomore slump. You know, he's still a premier jungler in the LEC, but other guys have stepped up and surpassed him. Hansama's walking into Caitlyn traps, get blown up. You know, there's there's been some suspect play from people all across G2. Still, no team has more leeway and a longer leash than G2. Three and two is still their record. And, you know, even though they should maybe be one and four or two and three, uh, as soon as best ofs roll around, you're still going to be feeling very good about G2. But with Fnatic leveling up, they're looking like the favorites so far here early. No question with G2 at this power level. Got to check in on the weekly fraud watch in the LPL. And unfortunately, alarms are blaring across the scene for our two main culprits, both Weibo Gaming and Ninjas in Pajamas. Weibo absolutely massacred by Ultra Prime in a Swift 2-0. Both Crisp and Xiaohu. These are guys who are at one time best in their role. They don't look at this split, let me tell you. Yeesh. I, is there, how many times are we going to say this? Is there anything more Weibo Gaming than to have as bad a start as they did, respond with a 2-0 and dominant performance, and then to drop another you one You knew they were losing after. the follow-up to anyone's legend after handing them their first loss. It was guaranteed. The giga stinker of a match this was for Ultra, against Ultra Prime. Holy cow, this is Weibo Gaming, and this is one where I think if anyone's telling you they know exactly what's up, what's going to happen in the next match from Weibo Gaming, other than a giant question mark with an exclamation point beside it. They're lying to you because this is what we've seen from Weibo so far. In that series where they won, you saw all the highlights. You saw part of the glimpses of why they were able to reach a world's finals just a year ago. And this series has shown you why, yes, they were at the point that they were 
heading into that series before it. And listen, the shy stepping out of his pseudo retirement ain't saving this Weibo roster. There's there's issues across the board for them, and there's definitely issues for NIP, who also lost in convincing fashion in Game Three. But this one is at least more about anyone's legend quietly becoming a surprise team early on in LPL summer, and one of the most exciting teams to watch. But 23 minutes, 16 kills to four, they completely annihilate Rookie and the boys in game three. I, I love this. I love anyone's legend doing this because this is the the remember me team of the LPL. All these guys that had once been pointed out as maybe this guy's the prospect, maybe this guy's the future for this organization, whatever type of thing, all failed out, didn't work out. They're all together now here with anyone's legend. It's like they're, they're all running. guys who have been trapped in ELO hell, but then they put them all together. They're in ELO heaven. And here we are feeling the feast of joy against the squad like NIP stamping them with the fraud label in this matchup because they did look fraudulent against this anyone's legend who was showing us again that they're anything but frauds from what we have seen this split and how they bounced back to that uh, rough loss against Weibo. This was absolutely that resetting of the switch right back on track to what they had been doing before that series, which is completely what you wanted to see from this team. And I think you can really identify, of course, looking at Shanks in the mid lane, you got Croco in the jungle, and the big one for me, Ale in the top side. Ale, how many times do you forget about this guy and know that he is still one of the most consistent and real threats lying in the weeds in the LPL if you if you make a mistake against yeah, really got out of EDG at the perfect time. Did a guy uh, like Ale heading over here and now leading the way or helping lead the way for anyone selection who had four and one sitting pretty to finish top of this packed five team group in Group D. Top esports and the rest of the guys were dominating as usual, but they're not anywhere near Fraud Watch. It's NIP and Weibo uh, at the forefront on the most wanted posters for frauds in the LPL. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, lovely individuals. Thanks so much for hanging out, as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.